my, uh, my friend in the back. I, you turned 10 now, right? Remind me your name again? LJ. LJ. Good to see you. came to one of our first events here in New Hampshire. It's good to see you, young man. So I have a new question. Okay. So what will you do with the money we have received from China? And what will you do with the money we've already spent from our government? Mm -hmm. Great question. First of all, LJ is 10 years old. Ask me some of the best questions I get. Let's give LJ a little round of applause here. I'm so proud of you for being a concerned citizen. What, what grade are you in? Fifth. You're in fifth grade. Well, I think there's an old saying that if you can't explain it to a fifth grader, you probably don't know what you mean yourself. So let me, let me see if I can meet that test, okay? So here's the, because it is a kind of complicated issue. So here's the game that China played with us. Okay, we told ourselves that we could export Big Macs and Happy Meals and somehow spread democracy to places like China. That this was global capitalism. Well, what China realized is that actually we can win that game. So we thought we were going to use our money to get them to be more like us. What happened is they realized they could use access to their market, their money, to get us to be more like them. Or, or actually one step worse than that, they realized they could use our money to get us to be more like them. And it's worked. Right? So that's how you get to large U.S. companies systematically criticizing the U.S. without saying a peep in China systematically applying carbon emissions caps to the U.S. energy sector here at home, like BlackRock, so they do that to Chevron and Exxon, tell you, you can't release carbon in this country in the interest of global climate change, where that same carbon emission is now being picked up on the other side of the world by the likes of PetroChina. And then you look at who's one of the largest shareholders of PetroChina. It's none other than BlackRock using the Chinese client money to do it. So this isn't capitalism. This is mercantilism, where they're calling our farce, using our own companies back against us as lobbying pawns, forced data transfers, forced technology transfers. I'm actually going to share something with you guys that you probably don't know. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is just plain, old, boring reality. Airbnb. Anybody in here ever use Airbnb? A few of you. So Airbnb literally has to hand over the user data of American users on its platform as a condition for Airbnb being able to do business in China. That includes even the private messages sent between someone who's a renter and a host. That's not capitalism, folks. That is mercantilism. It is a use of our own companies as Trojan horses to undermine the United States from within. So I think this is our moment to say we will sign the Declaration of Independence that Thomas Jefferson signed in 1776. By the way, he wasn't that much older than you were back then. He was about 14 years older than you. 24 years old, the guy signed the Declaration of Independence. The greatest mission statement ever written for a nation in human history. That is the Declaration of Independence that I'll sign as your next president, to say that we will not depend on an enemy for the shoes on our feet or the phones in our pockets. And you know what's going to happen? China is going to fold and say we're going to have to play by the same set of rules because that would hurt them far more than it would hurt us. We just need the spine of a leader who has the courage of conviction to actually stand for the interests of this country. That's what it's going to take. And if we revive that, then we're going to have a China that actually does play by the same set of rules or else we're going to declare independence and cut the cord. That's where I am. And LJ, thank you. Proud of you every time. Keep staying engaged and ask your teachers those questions. Maybe you'll teach them something you know, back in return. I'm proud of you.